great seeing you guys again after an absolutely splendid weekend. We've been, we've been blessed over this weekend with, with God's Word and with His presence. And before I continue, I am fluent in Afrikaans as well and in King James. So if you would tolerate me this morning in English, I really appreciate that. Um, it's just to, to accommodate the people that's not as good in Afrikaans as I am. Um, let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the ministry of your word in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Lord, thank you for every person here this morning. Thank you for Waypoint, for shining the light in this amazing, amazing world. Lord, we love you. Thank you for what we will receive this morning. And we know that you love us first. And therefore we can respond. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. I uh, have got a little bit of an unplanned thing. I, uh, I trust that you'll be okay with that. I would love someone that received healing yesterday to just come and testify about that. And please don't be shy. We are called to testify about the great things God has done for us. So, I, I prayed for boldness yesterday as well, I can remember. Um, the people won't think that you are smarty pants. Please come. Are we going to do it like the Apollo? Oh, not. Marvelous. Thank you. Whatever. Okay, <coughs> Morning, everybody. Well, yesterday, uh, yeah, I think the boldness thing is what set it off. I wasn't one of the first to get up. Pastor said something about a shoulder, and I looked around, and I think there was quite a pu couple of people with shoulder problems. I had a torn rotator cuff, which I tore about four years ago. And through the miracle of prayer yesterday, I was healed. I can do whatever I want with my shoulder. Thank God. Anyone else? I saw there was another person that was tempted. Vanilla. Wonderful. That's right, Mira. Fifteen years ago, I had cancer. Yeah. yeah, here is the yeah. Fifteen years ago, I had cancer. And since then, they removed my glands. And since then, I was numbed around here. My back, my back is numbed. My arm is numbed. And Pastor Louis prayed for me. And I can just say that numbness is gone and I also had a, a sore shoulder due to that and there's no pain anymore. Thank Very you. Good. Thank you to the Lord. Marvelous. Anyone else? One last one. Here we are. The reason why this is important is that we need to have faith in our hearts that God cares about the smallest thing in our lives. Um, I can't say my back is um, totally healed, but I can tell you that it's on its way. And I can also tell you <laughs> that I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ yesterday. <laughs> and I can also tell you that I'm his son. And I can also tell you that yesterday on my way back home, I phoned my mom to tell her that I'd given my life to Jesus. Is it all right if I talk about this? Please, go. Um, and then... 
when I, I finished talking to her, I asked to speak to my dad, whom I haven't had a relationship with basically in my whole life. And um, I asked him, Dad, if you can please forgive me. And I'd love to come give you a hug sometime. And then I phoned my sister. I've got two sisters. And I phoned her and I said to her, I asked her to forgive me. She asked me, Rodney, what's wrong? I said to her, nothing, it's just please forgive me. And she said she does. Anyway, and then I had a busy day. I went to my mother-in-law and I asked her, um, now just I was to tell you a bit, I've been married on the 23rd, I w will be married because I'm going to confess this. I will be married and still married on the 23rd of December for 14 years. I've got two beautiful, beautiful children. I'm so blessed to have them. I went to my mother-in-law and I said to her, I've never ever hugged my mother-in-law. <laughs> um, yeah, um, anyway, I get now out to her and I said, my name is Margaret. The reason why I can call Margaret, I have to call her, but she's not a few years older than me. So what happened was, um, I came to her gekomen, and I said, Margaret, I will end up with her in um, my school for a but he was by the ice. The question for Margaret, as a wife, will you me forgive? Forgive me for the things that I didn't know I had to do, and that I, your daughter. <laughs> die recht behandel het vir 14 jaar nie. En um, ek het daar een drukkie gegeen. En sy het ook gesê, sy vergewe my. Ek het gebid op wat huis toe. En vir die Heere gevraag, om asjeblief, dat my vrou hier so veroogend moet wees. En sy het toe gesê, ja. En toe ek by die by haar kom, toe sê sy, sy het nog tyd nodig om haar oor te dink. En toe sê ek, baie dankie dat jy daar dink. En gestraat, toe sê sy vir my, nee, sy kom nie meer. He. Maar ek weet nie wanneer die doop gaan gebeur nie. Ek wil net sê, dat ek nog steeds bid en hoop, dat sy hier sal uitkom. En dan wil ek vir iets heel te my anders sê. Daar was een ander verhouding. Wie, wie is een ek en iemand anders nie. En ek het gister gevoel, ek, wil, ek het altijd gedink die mensen wat iemand gaan vraag om verskoning, um, hoe kan ek sê, of hulle gaan vergewe, al is het in een moord situasie. Um, ek kon het nooit verstaan. Die story het uitgekom twee weke terug, om, of weer in die week eind ek, so my dewe is bykie die mekaar op die oomlik. Maar ek voel, ek voel vir die persoon ook vraag om my te vergewe. Dankie. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever whosoever if you were born under the bridge whosoever if your parents gave you up for adoption whosoever whether your teachers liked you or whether your friends liked you, whosoever, whether you are Afrikaans, whether you are white, blue, pink, yellow, whosoever, whosoever, 
none excluded. Whosoever shall believe on him will not perish, but have everlasting life. It's a verse that is quoted many, many times. But whosoever. And if you are a whosoever and you believe, you will not perish. And perish, I'm sure by now you will understand, is much more than not going to hell. What happened yesterday with these people that came to speak to you about wasn't about heaven hell. It was about a shoulder that hurt. It was about a migraine that ever so often came. It was about a relationship that had a coarseness in it. And yes, if you believe in Jesus and you make him the Lord of your life, you will not go to hell. But there's so much more. There's so much more that he wants to do for you. Whosoever. I oftentimes joke with a friend of mine that the gray that is busy getting into my lovely hair it needs to go. And then she says, no, but it's beautiful. I say, no, but it's not. Because this looks like perish to me. Other people might think that it's whatever. Almost said sexy. Um, <laughs> ach, I'm not vain. It's fine. <laughs> but whosoever dares to believe God, will not perish. Your back will be fine because the healing has started. And if you remain a whosoever, it, it will be sorted. It will be settled. Tomorrow morning, the pain will be less than it was this morning. It will be less than what it was yesterday because you are a whosoever. Whoever dares to believe God will not perish. I want to take you through a little journey of the life of Jesus. And the next scripture is in Luke 2 verse 52. It is an amazing, amazing scripture. It's very short. But it taught me so much about the love of God the Father for us. I was astounded. The verse says, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. All right. This is Jesus we are talking about. I grew up in a world where I was taught that Jesus, because he was God, had all wisdom from day one, had all grace from day one, had all knowledge from day one. But Jesus increased in favor with God. Jesus increased in favor with God. I can understand that he increased in favor with man. Because as they got to know him, his love was irresistible. But Jesus increasing in wisdom, Jesus increasing in favor, it was a foreign concept to me. I thought God loved Jesus perfectly from day one, and he did. But as Jesus executed his life in harmony, with the heart of the Father, the favor increased. The first miracle Jesus performed was not raising Lazarus from the dead. It was
was only in John 11 that, that God took him to that place where he grew in stature. And where I'm heading with this is, I'm showing you how God raised his only begotten son to be king of this world. And if God raised his only begotten son to be king of this world in this manner, he will do the same for you. Because you are a whosoever that believe. The next little place I want to go to is with Jesus' baptism. Oh, we know the story so well. He was baptized and the Holy Spirit came on him and the heavens opened and God the Father spoke and he said this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased an astounding statement when do you say something like that to someone you are parents You're going to get a letter from the school any day now telling you whether this year was a success or not in the life of your child. And if it was a success, what are you going to say? You are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. What happened here? God the Father openly expressed appreciation for what Jesus accomplished. We think, we were raised that way, I think, that Jesus was an autopilot. He basically got into the Boeing and he landed. If that was the case, God the Father would never have been able to say this. Jesus accomplished something. When he was a young boy, the favor of God increased on his life because he was in harmony with the love that was in God's heart. At the age of 30, when he got baptized, God the Father said, an impressive stint. Impressive. I'm well pleased in you. And if God raised Jesus in that manner, he will help you. My son, when he was one year old, I asked him to do some algebra. No. Don't ever think God is giving you algebra at the age of one in your walk with Him. The pictures we grew up with was God was a stern God that judged constantly between right and wrong. <coughs> if you were right, nothing said because you were on par. If you were wrong, he would take out the records in heaven and say, wrong, 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 score you negatively. That's how we grew up. I grew up in any case. Let me not talk on your behalf. But I got to know something about a God that is interested in whether I liked a motorbike or a car better. Because he's my father. Whether I enjoyed playing cricket or rugby more. Whether I loved accounts or maths or English or history. He was interested in the times that I cried at night. Because there was just something in my heart that wasn't cool. It's time we let go of this, this picture of this draconian God that's here to score us based on our performance on earth. Because if he raised Jesus that way, he showed us how he prefers working with us. I don't know the issues in your life. I don't know what the things are that, that's tough. But instead of seeing God on the other side of the table, see him on your side of the table. 
And if there's something that needs attention, saying, Lord, if you were I, what would you do here? How do we go about this thing? My favorite story is, is Moses in front of the Red Sea. I briefly referred to it over the weekend. God said, go and fetch my people. And here they are at the sea. The Egyptians are coming. And Moses cries out to God saying, what now? And the response is remarkable. He says, why are you crying out to me? Take your rod and split the sea. And we all know what happened. Moses took his rod and he split the sea. Don't ever think that God deals with you different to what he dealt with Jesus, to what he dealt with Moses, and David, and Daniel. Gideon is a favorite. When the angel appeared, he said, I'm the smallest from the smallest from the smallest from the smallest from the smallest, and I'm the youngest. And the angel responded saying, Gideon, man of valor. When God looks at you, He sees a child that He loves dearly. And I'm going to use one thing to explain that to you. And if you don't believe me, you'll have to repent. Because I'm a pastor. In Matthew 26, in verse 3, we read the next thing, the following. Jesus was busy praying before His crucifixion. He's in the garden. And the picture we get there is he's busy praying and there's sweating blood. And this is what he prayed. And he said, and he went a little further. And he fell on his face and he prayed saying, Oh my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. That God answered Jesus with a yes or a no or did the father remain quiet the reason why the father did not respond was because he couldn't choose between you and Jesus huh the reason why the father didn't respond is because he couldn't choose between you and Jesus. The reason why Jesus, after the third time, got up and he just went was because he couldn't choose between you and the father. time that you come to understand that God, the Father, the, the Almighty Father that created everything loves you as much with as much intimacy, intensity and dearness as He loved Jesus. Jesus didn't sweat blood because He was scared He sweat blood because for the first time in his life the relationship between him and the father would be broken. And he couldn't stand that. But still he couldn't choose between you and the father. And every shoulder and every knee and every back is evidence of God's specific love for you. When you get that nudge to surrender your life to Jesus, to make Him your King, do that knowing that you can trust the relationship. He will raise you as a father raises his children. To be successful in life. And one day, when he returns, or 
we go to, to heaven because this era has passed. The relationship will just progress. I want to pray for you that the love will just overwhelm your heart. Father, you know every person by name. In your word you say that you have engrafted their names on, on the palms of your hand. Not even the one, both. Lord, thank you that they have a deep understanding that to you they are as valuable as Jesus is. And that they are a whosoever that can believe and will therefore have everlasting life because they will not perish. I pray it in the name of our King, 